Hey guys, a few weeks back I threw out a question. With my Framework 16 on the way, should I review it against a similarly specced or priced 16 inch laptop? The results were tight with price just edging out specs by about 10%, but in the comments, many of you pointed out that there aren't really any laptops out there that can directly compare to the unique Framework 16, so I should save my money. However, a few of you had a different take. Since the Framework 16 is the ultimate modular, repairable, and upgradable laptop, and many customers are buying it to use as a desktop replacement, why not compare it to a desktop PC that's similarly priced? At first I thought, that's definitely not fair. We all know that dollar for dollar, a desktop PC can outperform a laptop thanks to far fewer power, size, and cooling constraints. But with efficiency becoming a major goal in mobile CPU and GPU development, that gap is starting to close. I've even shown on the channel how Apple Silicon powered MacBooks have met or surpassed the performance of a PC in some workflows for the same money. Plus, Framework themselves made a point to directly compare the Framework to a desktop PC in their promo teaser for the laptop. So today, I'm going to show you what you can build for the same money as a top-of-the-line Framework 16. Let's dive in. It's the money. Okay guys, before we dive into the PC specs, let's talk about the Framework 16 I pre-ordered. But first, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed because this is just my first video in my series covering the Framework 16. I'll be putting the machine through its paces in multiple workflows, including development, content creation, productivity, and of course gaming, before delivering the ultimate verdict on its place in the mobile computing realm. And guess what? Just as I was prepping to start shooting this video, I got the email that my batch one unit has finally shipped. As far as the exact specs of that machine, I went with the DIY version, opting for the Ryzen 9 7940HS paired with the RX 7700S dedicated graphics module, plus the standard extension bay shell. I chose the basic US English keyboard, black bezel, and the 180 watt charger. No G whiz power draining frills, the only extras I got were the numpad and a couple of extra plain black spacers. I'm bringing my own 32 gigabytes of DDR5 56 600 memory and a 4 terabyte SSD plus the expansion cards because well I have them all. Altogether the final price not including tax comes to $2,617. Not a cheap laptop which gives me a huge budget for a desktop system. But to keep with the upgradability theme and to be completely honest to keep the out-of-pocket cost down I'm going to be upgrading my $1,300 gaming PC to a high-end gaming and development workstation by upgrading the CPU, graphics card, and cooling. So I don't want to drag this out, but basically I'll be pulling out the RX 6750 XT, the Ryzen 5 7600X, and the air cooler. I'll keep the MSI Pro B650 Wi-Fi motherboard with the installed 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 memory, three terabytes of storage split between two M.2 SSDs, the Inwin 1050 watt 80 plus platinum rated PSU, all in my Asus Prime AP201. I'll be adding a brand new Ryzen 9 7900X, an MSI Expert RTX 4080 Super, and a Deepcool LS720 360mm AIO. Okay, let's get this upgrade underway with a gratuitous build montage.
there you have it, a pretty simple but immensely powerful upgrade for me while also setting up all the fancy camera shots. The upgrade took a while, but I'd estimate that it's about a 20 minute job, most of that being in the cable management of the cooler. I'm not sure how that compares to a similar upgrade of a Framework 16, but my guess is the framework would be much faster considering there's no rat's nest of cables to contend with. As far as total cost, building this PC from scratch today would cost you $2,250. That is, if you can find a 4080 Super in stock at the original MSRP. I got lucky and got this for its $1,150 MSRP, which is pretty good despite the 4080 Super barely outperforming its vanilla counterpart. This AIB card was 50 bucks cheaper than the original 4080 launched at. Whether over $1,100 is a fair price for any graphics card is an entirely different conversation, but the fact that this actual card is going for up to $1,500 a week later and people are actually snatching them up at that price is just an indicator that it ain't changing anytime soon. Anyway, back on track. I'm left with about 350 bucks in the budget because of course a laptop comes with the peripherals, display, keyboard, trackpad, that's included. Those are separate purchases for a desktop. Now, my peripheral setup is still perfectly fine for me and fits well within that $350 budget. However, my 32 inch 1440p 144 Hertz display is now a bit lackluster for this upgraded system, but you can definitely still fit a more appropriate display into that remaining budget. In fact, just after the holidays, I picked up a 28 inch 4K 165 Hertz display for my son on sale at Best Buy for just about $300. That's the display I'll use if I do any 4K gaming testing, but honestly, both systems, this and the laptop, will be connected to my $1,500 LG 5K 39 inch ultra ride for most of my non-gaming testing. And all of that should be starting soon because according to my shipping notice, my Framework 16 should arrive the day after this video gets posted. I'll start with a quick unboxing setup first impression video, and I wanna answer questions from y'all. Keep in mind, I haven't watched or read any of the early reviews of the Framework 16, but the info you guys have been dropping in my comments and the info Framework has been sending out in their updates, I understand reviews weren't awesome. I also know a lot of that may be due to the fact that I think all the price units were final validation pre-production units. <laughs> Well, mine is a full retail production unit, and according to all the emails I've got, most, if not all, of the identified problems should be fixed. So drop your questions in the comments below. What do you want to know? I'll answer whatever I can as I unbox, assemble, and set up the OS on the system. And then I'll get to see how it compares to my new desktop PC. But keeping it real, guys, this isn't about trying to embarrass the framework. Obviously, a system that consumes up to four times the power has a stupid advantage. However, since the framework really doesn't have a comparable laptop on the market in terms of modularity, repairability, and upgradability, this is an example of what is comparable in those areas for the same money. And remember, this wasn't completely my idea. Now, I am interested in seeing the performance per watt. I'm pretty sure the laptop might have an advantage there. And of course, there's the other super obvious advantage. Until the deep dive into the Framework 16 begins, I'll leave you with some footage of me enjoying my upgraded gaming rig and workstation, which may or may not have been an excuse to do all of this in the first place and the real reason for this video. Don't forget to drop those questions and hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.